Hello and welcome to another edition of What Does the Giraffe Say Media with me, Kathleen Rotorne. We're an organisation that aims to connect people around the world by holding live interviews on social media, focusing on conservation and wildlife efforts. Today you'll see that there are lots of different people with me and we're having a panel show to discuss the run for rangers. So what I'll do is I'm going to start off by allowing people to introduce themselves and we're going to, as there are so many of us, we're going to kind of go along as we go. If there's any questions that people have that they'd like to put towards any of the panel as we're talking, please do pop it in the comments section and I will do exactly that for you. Um, so we'll start off alphabetically. So Louise, you are from Game Rangers Association of Africa. If you could just tell us a little bit about yourself um, and about your project that you're working with. Thanks, Kathleen. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Louise. I'm the administrator of the Great Game Rangers Association of Africa. Uh, I have the great fortune of working with incredible men and women across the continent who work to protect our wildlife and our wild places. Uh, the Game Rangers Association is the oldest and largest uh, ranger association in Africa, and we try to support rangers uh, through a variety of focus areas, uh, including uh, upliftment and specialized training, uh, facilitating their well-being through uh, our important project called R uh, Ranger Protect, which offers uh, death, disability and, uh, and uh, medical evacuation to rangers across the continent. And uh, yeah, we try to also provide equipment, which is often much needed in, in under-resourced areas across the continent. Sorry, I, I didn't hear anything there, Kathleen, but I, I'm going to take take the floor here um, to introduce the International Ranger Federation. My name is Chris Galliers. I'm president of the International Ranger Federation. I'm uh, currently based in South Africa. The International Ranger Federation was uh, established in 1992 um, on the 31st of July, which uh, is now World Ranger Day as we celebrate it uh, and that's coming up obviously at the end of the month. Uh, the Federation's mission uh, is to develop, advance and promote throughout the world uh, community, the ranger profession and its critical role in the conservation of natural and cultural resources. Uh, we work with rangers around the world and uh, are set up with seven regions uh, and we have regional associations and uh, the Game Rangers Association is one of those uh, regional bodies and we have over 100 ranger association members uh, and then we have, we accommodate other kinds of membership as well uh, and are sitting over 150 members in total so uh, we operate globally uh, looking out for rangers around the world uh, really driving the ranger agenda uh, at a global level Excellent. Thank you so much, Chris. And then we're going to hand over to Carleen from Project Rhino. Um, Carleen, could you tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing? Good evening. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here tonight. Um, my name is Carleen Ruet. I'm a director for Project Rhino, which is a conservation NGO that supports 37 um, member rhino reserves throughout the province of KwaZulu-Natal. Um, and our big mission is to stop wildlife crime and ultimately rhino poaching. Um, Project Rhino runs seven major projects to support um, with this mission to combat the wildlife crime. These include um, canine, having canine units supporting our reserves, aerial support, um, dehorning, rhino art, which is um, community conservation education. We have um, we support equine anti-poaching units. We have a project um, of empowering the wildlife communities. And then um, the, the seventh and probably the most important is a ranger support and training. Um, there are well over 700 rangers in our member reserves just in KwaZulu-Natal. And um, rangers are, of course, the frontline workers that put their lives on the, um, online to protect our wildlife and um, protected areas. And without dedicated and supported rangers, 
we won't have any wildlife in open spaces to, to protect. Thank you so much. And then Mariana, handing over to you, if you can tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization, please. Thank you. Um, I'm Mariana Fenter. I'm the Wildlife Operations Coordinator at Thunder Private Game Reserve. So basically I look after the animals and I work with the wildlife monitors um, whose jobs it is to we'll look after the rhinos and our priority species. Um, Thunda is about 14,000 hectares. That's where the guys are going to be running. Um, it's, we've got some beautiful hills, open areas, um, yeah, very different vegetation all over the reserve. So yeah, we're all looking forward to hosting this and helping these guys and getting them through this. <laughs> Thank you. And Harry, that kind of leads us into you because you are the instigator for all of this and why everyone is brought here together today. Um, so people who are watching back home, they might not be aware of anything about why we have this group of people together and what it's all about. You've organised an event and you're going to do something called uh, Run for Rangers. You've said for yourself you're not a runner. What was your inspiration for this and kind of what made you decide to get all these different organizations involved? Well, just first of all, hello to anyone watching. Um, so the reason I kind of started this initiative was I was inspired around last year by a master at my current school, Hilton College, who ran, who ran slash cycled 500 kilometers um, from Hilton College all the way back to his home on the Mozambique border. This was a major charity event and it was done through the um, um, through the nonprofit organization Sports for Lives, who I've been recently been in great contact with. And you know, um, me and my dad, we were ran as a support car behind them. And while on that trip, I really got to get to know these people better and really be involved in such an amazing opportunity like that. And it really inspired me to really start my own initiative and put my own foot forward, considering how much privilege I hold in a country such as South Africa. And one thing that's always been a very much a part of my life is, you know, going to the bush, uh, visiting game lodges. And I mean, so I always thought, you know, what can I do to make a difference? And in, in recent light of, you know, ma major poaching this year and uh, hearing news of the rangers who are in need, need help, I thought, you know, this would be my chance to finally step up and do something. And so what exactly, for those watching, they don't really understand what the run is about, what would you say, how, how, what is the distance and what is, does it represent anything? Um, so our plan is to run 100 kilometers to help raise 100,000 Rand for rangers uh, who are in need of support. And, you know, the main goal overall is to raise awareness for rangers. The distance per se didn't really have much significance at first, but that's why we tied, you know, our goal to 100, 100 grand to 100 kilometers so we could kind of focus on saying, hey, for every kilometer, we're going to try to do this much to really help focus on getting that donation goal in. And you've managed to get some really great people on board to support the work that you're doing and also to run alongside you, which leads me nicely into yeah. Keegan. Um, so Keegan, your background is obviously very much in rugby. Um, what was the reason that you decided to get involved? How did you hear about it? And How's the training been going? Evening, everyone. Um, yeah, it's uh, quite an interesting one. I mean, I've, I've played 13 years as a professional rugby player uh, around the world. And, um, you know, uh, Edo or Chester, who's on this call here, him and I are primary school friends. So we know each other for a very, very long time. Um, and he joined the Sports for Lives team and I did a, an event with them down in the Eastern Cape and um, Chris Kingsley, um, who's a teacher at Hilton, mentioned Harry's run to me. And I think I might have had one too many beers when I agreed to uh, join Harry on the run um, because I woke up the next day and I thought there's no way this is going to happen. Um, but that being said, um, the challenge was set and, and I think you know, no matter what you're doing, you need a team and you need some some support. Um, and I was just wanting to support Harry and it was also really good for me in my time of my life um, to be able to put a peg in the ground and challenge myself as well. And I think that's kind of what Harry's doing. Here. You know, I'm not a natural born runner myself. Um, running many hours on the road is quite boring and, and, and tedious um, and certainly challenging in its own right. So 
yeah, I just want to lend my, my support to Harry. That's, that's really my role is to, to, to assist Harry along the way and, and get him through the tough times. And hopefully Harry can get me through a few of those couple of tough times as well. And and Keen, kind of following on a little bit from that, was was the fact that he was raising money for Rangers something that was close to your heart previously, or something that has now become so? You know, I, I think that I think the financial aspect of it is is one side. I, I think the awareness is is even more, and I think um, you know, with what Harry's doing with Sports for Lives and and what Sports for Lives does is really getting people that are from a privileged background and, and, and um, you know, live really comfortable lives to really put themselves in an uncomfortable position and to challenge themselves for a worthy cause. And it's too easy nowadays for someone just to write a check and, and hand it over and walk away. But ultimately, this is really immersing yourself in, into the cause. And I know Harry and, and, and his family have been involved in, in conservation for many, many years, and he has a, a, a huge passion for conservation. And... Um, and, and he was super inspired to be able to not only do a lot for the Rangers and, and the support teams around the Rangers, but also to inspire his peers and, and, and his and, and colleagues at school to be able to hopefully one day do something similar um, and, and create a, a motion for change. I completely agree. And that kind of feeds nicely as well into Chester, um, who is working for Sport for Lives. So, Chester, can you tell us um, a little bit about how you got involved with Harry and, and why you feel like how sport can help raise awareness for these causes? Thank you so much, Kath, and uh, evening, everyone. Um, yeah, such a privilege for us to be here tonight. Um, so I'm one of the directors at uh, Sport for Lives, as has uh, as, as been mentioned already. Um, yeah, from my side, how I got involved um, with Harry, actually, I was one of those crazy runners last year who did the run and cycle from um, Hilton to Manguzi. And um, Harry and Don, his dad, uh, were a great support team for us. Um, in fact, I don't think I would have made it to Manguzi if it wasn't for the, uh, for the Land Rover which I got uh, some, some moments just to hang on um, as I was on the bike there. So definitely it's a relational aspect as Keegan has mentioned already, you know, and, and that's what Sport for Lives is also about, that it's not just about the financial aspect, but really about building um, key relationships that um, can keep um, going together and sustaining one another as we, we try to bring a social change in, in South Africa. And, and following from that, Chester, have you found that you have seen people kind of changing their attitudes from these programs? Sure, very good uh, question. Um, yeah, so as far as the, the campaigns is concerned, last year was our first big one, which we did um, in conjunction with the Kolisi Foundation. I think um, from those conversations, you know, there's uh, the awareness part is one thing. And I think just bringing in the, the, the sports community and, and, and the ability for the community to come alongside, you know, different organizations and different causes. So I think definitely as time goes, um, as these conversations like tonight happen, as people get to be more aware of, of the possibilities of what sport can do, and not just um, the, 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 the Keegan Daniels or the, 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 the Sharks players or, 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 and so forth, but individuals just like Harry, who's a grade 12 student at Hilton College, you know, so I think all of us, as, a, as, a, as individuals in the country have the, the, the possibility of actually making a difference in the different communities that we come from by using sport as that vehicle. Yeah, I think it's a great leveler, isn't it? It means that people from all over different places can kind of join together and help to raise this awareness. Um, Mariana, I know that it's gonna be held at your, um, your locations. So what was it? Was it something that they approached you about or was this something you'd heard about and you were interested in hosting them? And what kind of things can they expect? I mean, I'm imagining it's a reserve. It's pretty wild. Is there is there any danger involved here? Yeah, so um, we work quite closely with Project Rhino, um, who put us, who put Harry in contact with us. Um, so he came to see Tanda and we took him for a drive to show him where he possibly could be running. Um, and I'm, to be honest, after his visit, I think we all felt very um, inspired to start running. And, uh, you know, if he can do this, then we all should at least be able to do 5Ks a week, maybe. Um, but, yeah, so um, it was very nice to meet him. And we're all excited. Um, our top management got to meet him as well. And they also said, you know, we this, it's a good thing. We're going to start doing these kind of – or this now with these guys. 
So the terrain is, like I said before, um, some areas are quite flat. There are a few hills. Um, we try to make it um, as easy as possible. We're not going to get them to run over massive hills. Um, you know, that's going to be a crawl up. So we're just going to um, run through the most of um, Tanda. So basically the reserve um, used to be split into two portions and they're both about 6,500 hectares. So we're going to do um, one on Saturday, um, which is the newest portion. It's beautiful there. Not, not many people go there. Very wild. Um, we don't know what we're going to see. Um, so it might be some Sunni, you know, smaller animals, general game. Um, we know the elephants are there at the moment. So if we do bump into any of the big animals, we're going to change the routes, um, go around them. Um, but yeah, we don't know what we're going to see. We'll, we'll see on the day what happens. And is it open to everyone to, to join in or is it a case of you you've, people have already signed up and that's the race closed? Yeah, you know, so um, we did discuss letting more people join, um, but then we decided that we want to focus on Harry. Um, this was his idea and um, it would be good for him to do it running with um, two of our rangers and then we've got another um, staff member that um, always exercises um, and we decided to invite her to join as well. Um, we might have a few more Tanda people running, um, but we decided not to invite more guests. Um, this is this is about Harry and the supporters that's running with him. So we're going to keep it small. It's also easier to keep um, them safe, being a small group, you know, being a big five game reserve. The first thing you learn is don't run in the bush. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, don't do this anywhere else. We're doing this like... We're going to be as safe as we can be. <laughs> and, and Keegan, that's going to fi fit into you as well, actually. Have you ever been running in the bush before? Or has it mostly been on roads and that kind of stuff? Well, coming from a, a rugby background, I mean, the furthest you ever run really is like 30, 40 metres, um, but repetitively. So this has been really a, a, a big challenge, um, especially mentally. But um i have i have run a bit in a, in, in a few other areas but um nothing's going to compare to what uh, you know the, the team's going to do this weekend and i was actually saying to chris kingsley a, a week ago you know i think harry's done an amazing job raising the the funds and, and getting the support behind him and for me actually what we often forget is to just be in the moment and enjoy it um as tough as it's going to be and it will be it's not if it's going to be tough it's definitely going to be tough but also just appreciate the fact that not many people in the world get to um, run, let alone five case through a, a you know a five star um, big five game reserve. You know we get to do it, do a hundred case. So there's a big emphasis on also just enjoying it and being in the moment and, and enjoying the experience as well. Because like I said to Harry, you know as, as through those tough times, it's really going to be amazing at the end of it when you when you've done that last 20, 30 meters and you finish it. Um, that will be really the the joy that that we'll get out of it, you know. And and obviously, what Harry's doing to be able to support the community and the Rangers is is, is exceptional. So, um, I'm actually just looking for. I just wanted to start really. I want to get my feet going and 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 let the pain start because I know it's going to hurt, and I just want to get there as quickly as possible. To be fair, <laughs> yeah, it's certainly not my idea of a fun weekend for sure. <laughs> um, Harry, are you going to be documenting it along the way? Are we going to see the blood, sweat, and tears as you run them? There's definitely going to be a bit of an aspect of documentation and the fact that, you know, we're going to try to keep everyone on board, you know, keep people invested in, in the story whilst we go along. It might all hopefully be a good way for us to distract ourselves from the pain, you know. And I'm just bringing up the website now. So if you go on to Sport for Lives, you'll be able to see um, Harry's, Harry's campaign and you can also donate to it there. So please do check it out. Um, and also please do like, comment and share because the more people who see this, the more awareness we can raise for this incredible uh, run that he's doing. Um, it's not many people that would take up the challenge. So well done. I'm very impressed. And I for sure will be cheering you on. Um, it kind of also ties in very nicely with the fact that July is World Ranger Month. Um, so we're going to feed into a little bit about how rangers need our support and that kind of thing. Chris, I'm going to hand over to you for a second. If you could explain to us 
um, a little bit about what World Ranger Month is all about and the fact that I know you work very closely with the Rangers. So what are the challenges and what do you hope to see change? Yeah, Kathleen, um, yeah, World Ranger Month uh, leading up to World Ranger Day on the 31st of July um, is, is really an opportunity to firstly celebrate the work that Rangers do, recognize the amazing work that they do. Uh, which often goes unnoticed under the radar um, and not necessarily well supported either in those roles. Um, so our, our role is to bring that to the fore. This, this year, we actually have a theme of diversity as well, uh, which looks to focus on uh, the diversity in its entirety related to ranges. And that includes uh, not just in terms of where ranges work, because obviously they work uh, from you know marine environments right up to sort of alpine uh, environments as well so it's not just looking at that aspect uh, but also in terms of the, the the type of work that they do they you know involved in educating working with communities uh, obviously working with wildlife research uh, education uh, there's there's a huge diversity of roles that they play uh, as well um, but it's also about looking to diversify the, the ranger sector. Um, and that includes looking at the types of rangers, those that are employed by the state, but also those that are community rangers that are tasked to, to look after their own landscapes, um, the indigenous landscapes as well. Uh, and then also in terms of uh, looking at uh, things like gender and um, religion and culture and the diversity that's, uh, that's required as well um so so yeah i think it's a it's a great opportunity to really uh, highlight the sector uh, raise the profile of rangers uh, because we know that uh, unfortunately this year is no different to many others but we've just completed a a, 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 a paper which looked at ranger deaths from 2006 to 2021 and over that period there were 2351 ranger deaths um, and of those, 42% of those ranger deaths are as a result of homicides. Um, so, you know, we, we not many people realize how dangerous it is. It's it's the it's the sort of people component that makes it dangerous. Obviously, unfortunately, rangers are also uh, prone to to deaths uh, in the line of duty as a result of the very animals they protect. Um, you know, in India, there's tigers and elephants and the same here in Africa. So it's a bit ironic, unfortunately. Uh, and I think it's it's really important to look at uh, focusing on, on the conditions that rangers work in. Um, obviously, they work in very difficult conditions and, and need a lot of support. And therefore, also looking at the ranger welfare uh, component as well. And I think also, just like Louise uh, raised um, the issue of the, the Game Rangers Association of Africa really focusing on things like uh, ranger insurance, getting basic uh, things like that in place for rangers really helps them a lot. They, they're not very well paid. Um, we from the International Ranger Federation would like to see rangers in terms of their profile raised to the same level as any other um, professional service like your police, uh, your health profession, etc. Um, so, yeah, I think it's really exciting. Lots of different events happening around the world, uh, celebrating the work of rangers, and then also celebrating um, the lives of those that passed away in the last year, where we recognize them in what we call the role of honor. Um, and, uh, yeah, we celebrate those lives that have paid the ultimate price for conservation. Yeah, I mean, it, it is such a tough job. And it's in terribly uh, hostile environments and it's often in very difficult environments. Um, Louise, I'm going to hand over to you. Um, I know you. what I really like as well about the fact with your different organisations is sometimes you can find in conservation, it can get a little bit um, where people work very on their own rather than collaboratively. So I love the fact you've got all these different federations and organisations working together to try and make a difference for rangers. What kind of difference would you like to see and what challenges are you seeing? Because I know you focus specifically on Africa. Yeah, um, as Chris mentioned, rangers are working in such harsh and dangerous environments. And I think that is one of the biggest challenges. Uh, they are unfortunately often uh, 
under trained and um, they don't have the, the proper equipment that they need. And this is just due to a lack of resources. So that's something that we really try to focus on to ensure that they they do have the capabilities and something as simple as a good pair of boots to enable them to patrol the very long hours that they have to. Um, those are just some of the areas that we really try to focus on to support the men and women on the ground. Um, but also, as, as Chris was saying, something like our Ranger Protect uh, insurance cover, this is vital to every Ranger and we believe every Ranger should have this cover in place. They put their lives on the line every day and um, something that offers medical evacuation uh, in a critical injury in, in, in the bush, um, this, this is key and we feel all rangers should have this support in place. We, we support about 1,800 members on, on this program, but certainly um, we, we need to, to get more, more rangers on, on, this, on this program. And um, yeah, even things like uh, backlash from communities and threats from, from poaching syndicates, this has a, a huge toll on, uh, on ranger well-being and something that we really need to look after. So I'm, I'm just bringing up your website now as well so people can go onto there and have a look at some of the work you're doing if they want to go into further detail. Um, as well, all of the organizations that we've got talking today are on social media. So please do give them a, a like, follow and share as again, it all helps to raise awareness. And I'm gonna bring up the International Ranger Federation organizations um, website as well. Carleen, you're working for Project Rhino. Um, and I know that um, you're very passionate about the work that you're doing. We actually had you on the show previously. Um, so what's, what, how do you fit with Rangers and how do you work alongside them and, and what challenges are you seeing? Uh, thank you, Kathleen. Um, so Pro Project Rhino is all about collaboration. Um, we um, are a member of the Game Range Association and, and so are they, a member of Project Rhino. And we work closely with the International Ranger Federation. Um, we can't work in silos. We'll never make a difference um, or an impactful difference if we work in silos. So it is really important to stand together to try and raise awareness and, and funding for all these projects. Um, for Project Rhino, um, we are really um, a, a support to our reserves. Um, everything we do is to fundraise to be able to support. Um, and for, for us, it's crucially important to ensure that our rangers are equipped and skilled to conduct the duties that are, that are expected of them. Um, it's important that they have the necessary backing and support to be confident, to be competent um, in, in the execution of their jobs. You know, we can't expect a ranger to face poachers and open fire and, and big five dangerous game if they don't have the right equipment. And that, that you know, there's so many things um, that I can list. It, like Louise said, it's from boots. You know, th these guys and, and women operate in harsh conditions for long hours. So something as simple as adequate boots makes such a massive difference for them. Um, uh, uh, adequate uniforms, binoculars, you know, you can't be expected to see a poacher over a distance if you, if you don't actually have a good pair of binoculars. Um, functioning radios to communicate with. Um, you know, if you do see a poacher and you don't have a, even have a basic radio just to call it in or ask for support, you're never going to win this war. Um, for us, training. Training is super important. Um, we fundraise to get the guys on training courses, and this includes everything from tracking training to rifle handling. You know, you can't, you can't give a ranger a rifle and expect him to feel confident, um, to be competent with something as, as big as a rifle, you know, that can kill. Um, you have to have that training and mindset to be confident and competent in that. Um, you have to have rifles that are in good functioning working condition. You have to have ammunition that, um, you know, that fits the rifle and that, that works. Um, simple things that people don't think of, like, like vehicles. You know, a vehicle needs tires. It needs fuel. The point is having a vehicle, but you can't use it because it doesn't have that basic things. And that is what Project Rhino tries to do. We try and raise funds so that we can support each of our member reserves with exactly what they need, whether it be radios, whether it be boots, whether it be uniforms, you know, the reserves already have such a massive impact 
Um, you know, they've, they've had to increase their staff, their range in numbers, their security, and um, we are really trying to just um, alleviate a little bit of pressure by fundraising so we can support with these basic things. And that's why collaboration with um, and partnerships with the Game Range Association um, is so important, the International Ranger Federation. Um, you know, we do need um, to work together to manage to do to do things like this. A hundred percent. We've got a question coming through. It's, it's a, a little bit more lighthearted in nature. And I'm guessing, Chester, it's probably from one of your friends. And they're asking, are you going to be running the full 100K? <laughs> Oh, that's a that's a that's a, a, a nasty question. Um, so you did ask earlier on about uh, any footage that will be taken uh, for 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 the for the run. So I volunteered myself to to hold the camera. So not much running will be happening on my side. <laughs> <laughs> a great excuse. I think I'd be taking the same <laughs> same approach if I was you. Um, okay, so I'm I'm conscious of time. So we're going to start um, wrapping up with the last question at the minute. If you have got a question that you'd like to put to any of our guests, please do so. Please pop it into the comment section, and I will do exactly that. If you're watching that um, and it's no longer live, you're watching it later on, and you still have a question that you would like to ask. Again, please do pop it into the comments section and one of us will be happy to get back to you. Um, so I'll start off with you, Harry, seeing as this is all you're, all you're doing in your instigation. But um, after your run, what's your plans for the future? Are you going to be looking to do more stuff for conservation and rangers? Well, I definitely think after this, you know, it's definitely going to give me a chance to really meet some incredible people like I already have in the conservation sector. And, you know, I definitely hope in the future that I myself can c contribute in some way to, you know, revitalizing and protecting our our wilds, because I mean, they do, they are a big part of our country and our world as a whole. And then I've got a question coming through, which I guess is going to you, uh, both Harry and Keegan. Um, so we'll start off with you, Keegan, and they're saying, how much training have you guys done for the run? The honest answer is probably not enough. Here's yeah, I, 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 I don't think there is enough training to be done if you're not a long distance marathon enduro runner. I think it's there's only so much you can do. I mean, this week I'm really just having a down week and enjoying myself. I've got the barnyard tomorrow night. I might have a few beers just to carb up before the run and just relax myself, I think. When when did you yeah. start training, Keegan? um it's probably less than six weeks ago um and i mean pre that i hadn't run further than 5ks in three years so it's literally going to be a baptism of fire and i i now know why when i tell people about this they think i'm absolutely mental um <laughs> but that's okay um my wife thinks the same thing about me every day so i'm pretty used to that um so you know bring it on i look forward to saturday and Harry, you, how much training have you have you put in for this? Um, well, like Keegan has said, probably not enough. But I mean, this idea had been in, in my head for a long time. You know, doing a big run. So I did. So definitely, but there's been you know some on off training uh, a couple months ago. And, you know, in the last two months or so, I've definitely been getting a lot more into the training and really setting my mind to it. I mean, you know, a couple of these runs definitely haven't been too comfortable. That's all I can really say. I think you guys are absolutely incredible. I'm so impressed with what you're actually doing. We, we have another question coming through from Winnie. Um, and I guess that's aimed more towards the, the Ranger Federation. So maybe I'll start with you, Louise, and then move on to Chris. Um, and she's saying, I always feel Rangers should be shown more respect to make them feel worthy as it's such a noble career. Would more vehicles help to keep them safe? So maybe, Louise, you start and then Chris. Uh, absolutely. I think... Uh many of the vehicles are as colleen was also saying you know they haven't been properly maintained or serviced uh, if we just have to look at the ranger roles over the past few years uh, i can only speak for africa but looking at them we've had many many vehicle accidents and that's really just been because vehicles their brakes aren't working and they aren't serviced and maintained so i think more vehicles or at least um, 
better looked after vehicles uh, would definitely save save more rangers lives and and just also to emphasize the reason for uh, vehicles not being well serviced and looked after is because uh, reserves are often so under resourced so yes absolutely i think it would make a big difference from my side i think uh, it's really great uh, question or, or, or sort of uh, what's when he has mentioned there in terms of uh, showing more respect i think uh, that's very important i think one of the challenges is that uh, Rangers operate in very far out isolated places and are not necessarily plugged into sort of the communication channels, particularly at a global level. And I think um, we did we did a we ran a program where we we, we tried to get uh, words of support directly to rangers out in the field so that they could uh, feel that they are, that uh, they are connected to a bigger um, a group and they have global support, even from people who they've never met. So I think that's important. I think, uh, you know, rangers do operate in isolated places. And then just in terms of the vehicles, um, as Louise said, it's, you know, better vehicles or better maintained vehicles is what's important. Um, motor vehicle accidents account for the third highest number of ranger fatalities, uh, in the, you know, in terms of what we've experienced uh, uh, since 2006 with our, our record keeping. So it's Certainly, um, you know, it's it's great to have vehicles, um, but if they're not working um, properly or people aren't trained to use them, they can be very dangerous. So it's, it comes with training and maintenance are critical uh, to to having those vehicles in the first place. Yeah, I think it's absolutely vital. Um, we have a question coming through for Mariana and they're asking, how does Tandas view the future past this run? Um, yeah, we'll, I think we'll look more into it um, after the run. We'll see how this goes. And like I said, uh, we want to focus this on Harry. Um, we did say it could be an annual thing. You know, we could look at doing this every year this, uh, this time um, for rangers. Um, because from our side, we also know um, our range rangers live in the bush. They, um, we provide them with uniform and boots and everything they need. Um, but I know they, they work hard, you know, they, they're out there and sometimes you don't see guys for, for weeks because um, they are supposed to stay hidden, you know, we, you don't want them to be visible the whole time, but they are out there and when you, you see them, they are happy and they greet you and we've got amazing people working here and um, it'll be great if we can um, do this for other reserves as well, you know, this money is going towards other ranges um, in other parks. So um, if we can do this every year, I think it would be amazing. I don't know if Harry would want to come run this every year. Maybe we should try and make a deal with him and see um, if he's keen. Maybe we can make it like 150Ks next time. Um, yeah, so I it would be good to do it every year, but I don't know if, uh, if he'd be happy with that. <laughs> Let's see how Harry gets on at the end of this one, and Keegan as well. Let's see if they're quite so keen, or maybe there's going to be several more beers needed to persuade Keegan next time to uh, to, do, to do the run again. Chester, for you, I mean, you guys do some incredible work. We spoke about it earlier um, with your Sport for Lives kind of being a leveller and trying to raise awareness of different causes. Where do you, what, what hopes do you see for the future? Yeah, so I think as mentioned um, tonight, um, definitely more runs for Rangers would be most incredible to be part of our calendar, Sport for Lives. Uh, in saying that, just to say to you, Harry and Keeks, uh, a massive uh, congratulations for yeah um, making this effort um, happen. Um, Harry in particular, um, a year is a long way away, but I think um, just from what you experienced last year, to be really, really putting your, your foot on the ground now um, a year later is really, really incredible, especially for a young men like yourself. So just from our side of Sport for Lives, yeah, we're really, really excited for this weekend. Um, uh, Chris, uh, one of our co-founders, will be joining uh, the guys for, for the run. Um, but future-wise, definitely, we are, we've got many, many campaigns happening around the country, um, in, in particular with different schools. Um, really got a lot of individuals as well coming on board, just like Harry has. And uh, we're looking forward to many, many occasions where we will have sport being used as the opportunity um, for people to be generous around uh, around South Africa and building relationships such as these. I mean, tonight for myself as well, I've learned so much 
just from you know being part of this um, conversation and many things that I, I was not aware of, I was not um, informed about, but uh, just being here tonight has been very, very informative. So uh, thank you so much for that. And with, with the Sport for Lives, do you have to be based in South Africa to donate? Can you be donating globally? Yeah, no, we don't have to be just in South Africa. Um, if you go on our website, uh, sportforlives.org, you will see the, the different uh, payment options. And uh, that is available for, for anybody across across the globe. Excellent. Thank you. And then, Carly, I'm going to finish with you because I know that you've um, been working across lots of different projects and Project Rhino works in collaboration with lots of other organisations. What would you say to others back home who might be watching Harry's story, might not feel as brave as, <laughs> as he's doing with his 100K, but want to do work to support conservation efforts? What kind of advice would you give to them? Um, I don't think you have to run 100 kilometers to make a difference. Um, I think it, you could start off by doing something small, like sharing the donation link, sharing the story, speak about it. You know, the more people that know, um, the more people we can inspire to make a difference, to contribute. Um, you know, and, and, and contributions doesn't always have to be financial. Of course, we need the finances to, to, to um, you know, to support and to buy the boots and to buy the, the tires for the vehicles. But if we can raise, you know, uh, the profile of rangers, if we can celebrate rangers and respect the crucial work that rangers do as our frontline workers, um, it'll give, um, you know, they, they look after our wildlife and our open spaces and it, it's, it gives them an opportunity to thrive and not just survive. And if, if we could have people, you know, talk the talk and share, and the people that can financially contribute, brilliant, um, that'll help. But, but you know, the more we share the message, we, the more we raise the profile, the more we work in collaboration with one another, um, you know, and, and like I said, doesn't have to, you don't have to run 100 kilometers to make a difference. Every, every contribution... Um, you know, every message that's shared is is making a difference, and and that's our focus. Um, Project Rhino is not going to go away. You know, we uh, uh, in, in our initial conversations mm. with um, Harry and the team, we didn't start this to be a once-off. Um, even if if Harry doesn't continue next year, he's definitely going to inspire the next mate to do it. Um, you know, he's he's not going to leave it. Someone is going to follow in his tracks mm. and. Next year we will be running uh, another run for Rangers, and uh, if if the time you know um, if the Tanda terrain was so tough, we'll find another spot to run. But but um, run for Rangers we will do, and funds we will raise, and support we will give. I absolutely love that, and I completely agree. Sometimes people can feel a little bit intimidated that it's, it all comes down to money, um, but actually it can be simple things just like um, communication, sharing the stories of the rangers, raising awareness, or even contributing your time and volunteering. It could be something that might not necessarily be seen as ranger-specific, but things like helping um, give financial advice or social media work. There's so many different things that people can do to help kind of work together. Um, okay, I've got one more question left and then we'll start to wrap up. Um, we've got a question coming through. And again, I guess this is for um, for Chris and Louise and they're asking, what is the root cause of poaching in South Africa? Why is there even demand for things such as rhino tusks, lion fur, et cetera? I mean, uh, that's a pretty big question, um, but yeah, if, if maybe Chris, you could start and then we'll go on to Louise. Yeah, uh, I think one of the challenges is that, uh, you know, in terms of the world now, it's a, it's a small place and uh, transnational uh, wildlife crime um, operates in every corner of the planet. Uh, so no uh, wildlife species that carries uh, a, a price tag is immune uh, from global trade or the, the illicit trade. So I think that's one of the challenges, the money involved in in uh, the illicit trade is, is significant as it's uh, touted to be the sort of fourth largest illicit trade um, in the in you know in the world. So 
I think uh, I think that's one of the big challenges. Um, and then obviously, unfortunately, it's a, a sort of a, a perfect storm where you've got an economic situation where uh, there's a there's a lot of poverty and and uh, people living below the bread line that are susceptible to the influences of uh, criminal syndicates uh, that that uh, enter and operate in in the country. And Louise, are you finding the same thing? And are you finding that a lot of the time um, the demand is actually coming from outside of South Africa rather than inside of South Africa? Yeah, absolutely. And um, as Chris says, there's there's really big money involved. And when you are starving and you have to feed a family, uh, you you do what needs to be done to to do that. So yeah, until until our poverty situation is improved. Um, we're going to have the challenge of poaching in our lives. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming on, guys. I absolutely really appreciate it. It's been fascinating. Harry and Keegan, good luck with your run. I wish you all the best. I will be sitting very comfortably with a cold drink watching. <laughs> Chester, good luck with the filming. I'll be looking forward to seeing everything that you guys are doing. And thank you guys, um, Tinder, for um, hosting the event and showcasing the amazing work that they're doing. IRF and GIA for always doing incredible work for the Rangers and Project Rhino, who are also working so hard and tirelessly to kind of raise awareness for the work these guys are doing. Thank you, everyone, back home for watching. Um, if you tune in on Sunday, we'll be doing a Ranger panel where you'll get the opportunity to speak to Rangers from all over several different continents. And they'll be talking about the different challenges that they face um, and the different experiences and the highs and lows. So we hope to see you then. We've had some lovely feedback as we've been chatting, lots of comments from around the world. Everyone's cheering you on. Uh, both in terms of the run and also for the work that you're doing. So thank you so much. Um, but for now, I would like to say thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers, Kat. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.